行かねえよな。What is up, y'all? This is the Ghost of Gains, your go to source for all things gaming, anime, fitness, and webtoon. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about Tears of the Kingdom, the new Zelda game that just came out. Damn, this feels like the intro of the first video I did, but pretty much now that the game is out, I've been playing it. And just something to keep in mind that this is gonna be kind of a first impression video. It's gonna be some mild spoilers just for the beginning of the game, past the tutorial phase and past the first temple. And I just gotta tell you guys that I've been absolutely loving it and I was kind of right about some of the adjustments that they made from Breath of the Wild to this game, which I'm gonna be going into today. So if you enjoyed this video and if you enjoy my other stuff, consider subscribing, liking, sharing, all that good stuff. And without further ado, let's get into it. So just starting off, if you guys watched the first video I made about Breath of the Wild and some cons I had about it, um, I had some high hopes for this game that they were going to fix some things that I felt Breath of the Wild kind of lacked. And they really did. I've been playing this game, I've been playing it on my new freaking OLED Switch, the Tears of the Kingdom Edition one, and I've been loving it every step of the way. And kind of the first thing I wanted to talk about is that they really brought real boss battles back. If you saw my other video, I kind of had some complaints about the Blight Ganon design, the Blight Ganon boss battles kind of being samey, kind of being a little bit boring in design. Um, it was a kind of a big qualm that I had about Zelda because it was the first game that I had on the Switch and I was really excited to see the Switch's power with big boss battles. and. Tears of the Kingdom has not disappointed so far. I mean, I did the Wind Temple. Uh, I just did the whole sky, uh, act, like, you know, you just journey through the sky to get there. And I'm really excited for the potential of what I'm seeing. It seems like they got some big boss battles back, kind of similar to Mulgara in Wind Waker. And I have really high hopes for this. I've been loving the bosses so far. Even like the little mini bosses, the Bokoblin bosses, uh, it's shaping up to be an actual adjustment that they made and because I know that fans had some qualms about that, some qualms about the Blight Ganons, so it looks like they corrected that and I'm excited to see more of the bosses going forward. Another thing that I've been noticing and loving is more cutscenes with more voice acting. You know, Breath of the Wild kind of got shat on for the voice acting a little bit. I didn't have too big of an issue with it. I know that some scenes were a little... Oh man, oh man, oh man. What am I gonna do? Monsters! They're here! They found me! Help! Huh? Huh. But honestly, I didn't have too big of a problem with it. And I think that Zelda, the direction it needs to go, and I think the direction Pokemon really needs to go, but that's a different video, is voice acting and cutscenes. And from what I've been seeing, they add in more animated cutscenes with this game now, probably because they, I don't know, maybe got more budget. It seems to be the direction modern games are going in. You know, the little text box with the ooh sounds um, is kind of a old trope. It does have its charm still, they kept it in. And I think I'm seeing a good balance between animated cutscenes with voice acting and the little, you know, text box, I like, you know, typical JRPG cutscenes that we seem to be getting. So uh, I really like that they're increasing that, even with the critiques of the voice acting from Breath of the Wild. It seems like, I mean, the voice acting seems good to me in this game, and I haven't seen anyone complaining about it. So I think that's a huge step up, and I'm loving that I'm seeing more of that in this game. Another huge improvement is the overworld and what to do in it. Um, I you know I keep referencing my first video, but uh, it seems like the big complaint that I had was that the overworld was beautiful in Breath of the Wild. I loved the cell shaded pastel graphics, but I felt that there was kind of a lacking of things to do or a lacking of a variety of things to do. And I'm not alone in this critique of Breath of the Wild. I know Internet Pit Stop made an amazing video basically having all of my complaints of Breath of the Wild uh, that I had about it in his video. So go check him out but 
pretty much I felt that there was a lacking of a variety of things to do in the overworld in Breath of the Wild and I'm loving the corrections that they seem to be making in Tears of the Kingdom from what I've played. There's still shrines, there's still Korok seeds. It seems like, you know, they're going for a divine beast format of the four regions that you need to go for the strange phenomena. But I like that they're diversifying the different problems that each region's facing. I've only gotten up to the Rito village and I kind of played out of order. Uh, I went to uh, the little, you know, Prince Sidon. I think it's like Lanayru's area where it's the water and the sludge is falling. And then I realized that, oh shit, I gotta go to Rito Village. I didn't really look at the quest log, but typical Tears of the Kingdom problems. And I like that there's kind of, you actually get to explore the regions more now. It's not just designated to the Divine Beast. You actually need to go throughout the region, explore the geography, go to caves. There's caves now, in addition to the stuff they had in Breath of the Wild. And it really seems like they're just expanding on everything that Breath of the Wild had already. There's caves now, there's a whole sky map. I mean, this game is, if you thought Breath of the Wild was huge, this game is even bigger. I mean, there's a whole sky map, there's a the land map of Breath of the Wild, and even I, I even took a dive into the chasm of, of Hyrule just to see if I could do some shit where it's like, oh, I can go to the end of the game now. But it seems like there's a whole underground map too. This game is absolutely huge. There's things to do, there's caves. There's a more of a variety of uh, enemies now, which I think they corrected nicely. There's more populations too. There's a whole segment in the middle of Hyrule Field that has an actual town. I always thought that was kind of lacking in Breath of the Wild. I love that they used a wild setting, kind of an apocalyptic or pseudo-apocalyptic setting, but I really like that they added more towns again. There's more people to interact with, and it just makes things more interesting. It makes side missions more interesting too. Even just calling the things temples again kind of just brings me back and satisfies me too. I mean, I think that they really did listen to the fans overall in this game in terms of keeping that Breath of the Wild uniqueness that the Zelda series really needed, but also coming back to some of the linearity, some of the old Zelda formula stuff that fans missed, such as the music. Uh, there's there's a little bit more music now. I never had a problem with it in Breath of the Wild, but there's, there's not just piano keys now, there's actual other instruments. And we also got temples back. We have a diversity of boss battles back, diverse enemies. And I really like that they're now having you explore the area and do more things to lead up to the temple rather than just meeting the champion and you can kind of go right to it, you know? And yeah, I don't really have too many qualms about it. I know that some people are saying there's some frame rate drops. I definitely saw a little bit of it when you're kind of gliding over to go into the Wind Temple. There was kind of some Pokemon Scarlet and Violet level glitching there, but Honestly, I think that with how big the game is and how kind of underpowered compared to other systems the Nintendo Switch is, I think it's done a pretty good job of it. I've been playing it on my OLED and it looks amazing and I played it on the TV and stuff too. And as far as the big question of is this just a DLC of Breath of the Wild, and I think I'll end the video with this, but I don't think it's a, just a DLC of Breath of the Wild. I do think they actually put way more into it than just being a DLC. There's a whole sky map, a whole underground map, and even the base region that you played in Breath of the Wild does not look the same anymore. I, I don't know if maybe I just have a bad memory, I haven't really played Breath of the Wild in a while, but the region looks different and it almost seems like it kind of shifted around and changed. There's definitely more towns, more population, and yeah, I mean, you've got your Breath of the Wild stuff. Even the shrines are better in my opinion. I actually like the rune abilities in this game a little bit more than uh, Breath of the Wild. And as far as the crafting goes, I think it's a definitely an interesting thing. People are saying it's kind of like, a, like similar to Fortnite in a way. I didn't really play Fortnite, I kind of just watched it. But I think the crafting thing is cool. I think you can get creative with it. I'm not really like a craftsman in video games. I'm not really one to like do crazy-ish like these Breath of the Wild players do. But I think it's a nice addition. I use it when I need it and that's pretty much it. <laughs> but I do like the abilities in this game. I think it's cool to be creative with them. And I've really been liking the puzzle in the shrines so much more in this game than Breath of the Wild so far. But yeah, just wanted to make a quick video on my first impression thoughts on Tears of the Kingdom and why I actually do think it is better than Breath of the Wild from what I've been playing so far. Uh, Breath of the Wild, 
I kind of struggled to get into. I really wanted to get into it, but it was kind of tough. You know, I didn't put too many hours into it. I beat the whole game, but I didn't really explore too much, but I think I'm definitely gonna do much more exploring in this game uh, with how it's been going. So uh, yeah, thank you guys so much. Let me know what you think in the comments. Well, have you been playing Tears of the Kingdom? Do you think it's better than Breath of the Wild? Or do you like Breath of the Wild more? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to get to know me on other stuff, I'm on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.